Hello again. Today we have people who do art, all sorts of art, we call them artists. And the same is true of the Stone Age. People did art in the Stone Age. And when we think about Stone Age art, most people think straight away of the pictures of animals that have been found in caves in places like southern France and Spain. And those wonderful pictures found in places like Lascaux, Altamira, Peshmel and other sites. There's loads of sites in, the, in that part of Europe where these paintings have been found. And the paintings that we see most of, the animals that we see most of, are usually horses and bison. But there are many, many other types of animals painted onto these caves by Stone Age people. Uh, in other caves, for example Rufignac, you can see mammoths and woolly rhinos from the Ice Age drawn on the walls of the cave. So that's the sort of art that we usually think about. And that was made by painting the walls of the cave with a material called ochre. This is red ochre. It's like a powdered stone that you can grind up and make into paint. That's red ochre. There is also yellow ochre and if you want, if you heat ochre up in a fire you can change its colour a bit but if you want to paint with black you can also use crushed charcoal or something called manganese and those materials were used for painting in the caves and they probably also painted their faces with the same material. So let's have a look, let's see if it works. What do you reckon? Red nose. Okay. Now then, I'll carry on with my red nose and talk about cave art a little bit more. Have we found any cave art in Britain? Um, not very much. Because Britain, for a lot of the old Stone Age, was covered by ice and if people did do any drawings or cave art or paintings in caves, when the ice melted, the water came pouring through the caves and washed the paint off the walls. But we have had found some cave art at a place called Creswell Crags. It's not painted cave art, it's art that's been scratched into the walls of the cave. And a few years ago, somebody looking in one of the caves there recognised that somebody had drawn a deer a very, very long time ago, and in other places in the cave they found other examples of, of animals and birds scratched into the walls. But in Britain we have very, very little cave art because of the melting ice water going through the caves all those thousands of years ago. In France and Spain the glaciers didn't get that far down south and their cave art was preserved if the cave's entrances collapsed and were left undiscovered for many thousands of years. Now there's a different type of art, apart from cave paintings, which is called portable art. And portable art is something you can carry. And it's usually pictures that are scratched onto materials like bone or antler or mammoth tusk or other types of ivory. Or possibly somebody has shaped the ivory or the bone or the mammoth tusk or antler as well into the shape of an animal or a person. And that is something that can be carried around and moved from place to place, and we call it portable art. If you'd like to see some examples, we should just take a moment to look at a few on screen now. There, what did you think of those? Pretty impressive stuff, isn't it, really? I've said all along that Stone Age people 
were clever and talented and had just the same brains as you and me. And creating that sort of art takes a very long time and a lot of skill and a lot of effort, especially the carvings, which meant, took many, many hours to do. Now, a third type of cave art that not so many people know about is what we call symbols, which is another word for shapes. And 32 different symbols have been spotted in caves all over so that, again, southern France and northern Spain. And if you take a look at them, maybe even pause the video, a lot of them look quite modern. A lot of them would appear on a computer keyboard or on a keypad on a pad computer. So take a look at them for a moment. Now, one of those symbols in particular is quite interesting. It's called a tectiform, a tectiform. And in one cave at Ruffignac, they found a tectiform that had been scratched into the soft walls of the cave, because not all cave walls are solid. Some cave walls have soft material on the side of the wall caused by water running down the side of the cave. And it has the wonderful name of moon milk. Moon milk. What a wonderful thing that sounds like. And people could scratch things into the soft moon milk on the walls of the cave. And at Ruffignac, this particular shape, the tectiform, was scratched into the wall of the cave. But when they looked closely at the hands that had made the marks, they realised that it wasn't a grown-up. It was a child. The, fingers, the finger marks were too close together for them to be an adult. So this child had drawn this shape on the wall of the cave. Now take a look at it. What do you think that child might have been trying to draw? What do you think? Take a moment to think about it. Well, whatever you said, a lot of people think that what that child was probably drawing was their home. It was a drawing that looks like a tent or a shelter with a stick going up the middle of it up it to keep the, keep the roof up. They think it's possibly a drawing of their house, a bit like young children draw. Um, nowadays, if you give them a, a crayon and a piece of paper and ask them to draw something, they will often draw a picture of their house. So I think it might have been a stone age child drawing their house. Maybe while mum or dad were further down the cave drawing mammoths and woolly rhinos. What about handprints? Handprints are a very, very popular type of design to draw on the wall of a cave or on rocks. And they've been found all over the world. People have looked at handprints again in Europe and they found a number of things about them. Most of the handprints that have been drawn in Europe are red, they are negative handprints, in other words somebody's put their hand on the wall of the cave and painted around it to get the shape. Most of the handprints are also female. Now how do we know that a thousand, many many thousand year old handprint is either by a man or a woman? Well, the answer is quite simple. If you look at a hand, we have a number of different fingers on our hands, don't we? We have the little finger, we have the what we call the ring finger, we have the middle finger, we have the index finger, mine's covered in red ochre, and we also have the thumb. Now, with men, the ring finger is often longer than the index finger, but in women, it isn't. So, if a handprint is found on a cave wall with a ring finger longer than an index finger, the people looking at the handprints usually think that's a man's print. And most of the prints are made by women. Now, some prints have missing fingers, and nobody's really quite sure why. We don't know whether the people have actually lost their fingers, or maybe they're having a little bit of a joke and they just painted a few fingers out for a laugh. We just don't know. But we do know in very cold times it's possible to lose fingers due to frostbite. How were these handprints painted? Well, they might have been painted using a brush, but some people think they sprayed the ochre onto the wall. Now, how do you spray 
ochre in the Stone Age because you don't have spray cans and things like that. Some people think that they actually put the ochre in their mouths and went, maybe had a little drink of water, made it all gooey and then splat it all, all over their hand while your hand was on the wall of the cave. I think that would taste horrible. Other people think they did something slightly more clever. They think that they put the ochre into a big shell like that, but they put a small hollow bone coming out of the ochre and then they held that up against the wall and they got another bone which is hollow and blew across the top of the small bone like that. And that air rushing across the top of the small bone would pull the ochre and water out up the bone and splatter it all over the wall, just like a spray can. And that is how some of the people think it was done. I prefer that one. I don't particularly like the idea of putting ochre in my mouth. So there you have it. All sorts of different types of cave art, not just animals, but also portable art, symbols and shapes, and handprints. So I shall leave you now to go and think about cave art, maybe even try doing some. I'm going to go and see if I can get this red paint off my nose. I hope so.